Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, A Real Estate of Mind with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people achieve wealth through real estate investing. And we have a very interesting guest on today that I can't wait to learn more about. And I think it falls right up our alley from kind of how we built our little empire here. Yeah. Um, and we have Philip Vincent on here from momshouse.com. Yeah, hey, Philip. I think our, uh, Hello. we get a lot of golden nuggets from you, Philip. Yeah. I, I hope so. I, I've got something unique to share and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Yeah, I think that you, you have built your business model around the estate. Really, is that, that's kind of what you've done, but you've done something very different with it. A different approach, right? I, I would say that, I, I would say it's around that, that pivotal moment in someone's life when you're moving your mom into senior living. That, that moment, it's probably the first moment when you're starting to make decisions for her. So when you think about who your mom is, right, that person that's done everything for you, think of the, what, what has to happen for that moment for you to have to start making decisions for them. Um, no one is prepared for it. No one is ready for it. Uh, it usually falls on what I like to refer to as the, the most responsible child. And what I mean by that is if there's a family of five brothers and sisters, there's usually one daughter that's been doing all the, the, the doctor's appointments, all the running around, you know, and, and the other brothers live out of town and they're the ones that are the most opinionated, you know, and, and, and she is just going through it. You ever hear the term being quartered, you know, back in medieval times, they'd put four horses on somebody and pull them apart. That's literally what she's going through. She's being pulled in four different directions. And I'll go into those if you guys want to talk. Yeah, about I, I, I would love, before we jump into what you do, let's yeah. talk about who you are. I think people okay, cool. know what your background is, that kind of stuff, where you're from. Tell, tell us about you. We like, like to know about Sure, Philip. Sure, I'm Philip Vincent, and I'm from St. Louis. Um, I've been doing real estate for 22 years now, and so I, I kind of did this business backwards. I started off in uh, new development, and I worked my way back to a wholesaler. And so oh, a, lot of, a lot of people aspire to do the exact opposite of that. And so my personality, uh, I, I just... I didn't really like adult babysitting, which is what I call contracting as much as me I did the, the thrill of the deal, you know, the wholesale. And for me, I get to go in and I get to unlock the family's problems and buy the house and move on to the next one, right? I'm a deal junkie. I'm always looking for the next deal. And so uh, my, I think my mission in life is always to think, uh, I don't mind working hard, you guys at all, but I don't like to work dumb, right? I want to figure the code. I want the cheat code before I start. And so I've always tried to figure out where do the best leads come from? And in our business, when you're in real estate, you actually realize we're really in the marketing business, right? We, we spend totally. tens of thousands of dollars a month on to make that phone ring. And so I've built a different type of business where my appointments come to me now. And so it's a very fulfilling way to do this business because, um, We'll talk about who, what that client's going through. But when we look at the nature of what the best lead is, I'll take the Pepsi challenge with any type of lead because I, I know these are the best lead. They're, they've been so good to me that I was keeping it a secret for like the first five years I was doing it because I didn't want anybody else in St. Louis to do it. And so now that my business has grown to a national scale, now I need uh, trusted investors nationwide to help me with my mission. I'm very curious to you know when Amber and I started, we back, started back in, uh, I don't know if you know our story now, we started back in... Uh, Seven. Oh, oh seven. And we, you know, we've done about 700 deals in counting. We do about a hundred deals a year in our, in our flipping business. And we have, nice. we have a coaching arm too, and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's, we, I think if we look back over the course of all the renovations that we did, especially when we were involved early on, many of them were estates. Yeah. We didn't always get them directly from the seller. We sometimes got them through agents or through referral networks Yep. But but even the even the ones we got through the agents and referrals, a lot of times we would write a personal note though that made us that right. that humanized us instead of making us like a company. And I think that's you you you've really found a real niche market. Yeah, I think, in a yeah. way to approach that niche market. Yeah, yeah, that. We buy people's forever homes, right? That's a pretty big deal. Who you sell yeah. your forever home to? And so I think. When I look at the industry, how there's these billion dollar companies, these iBuyer companies, um, people on other podcasts have referred to what I do as kind of like the anti iBuyer. And I, I love that because I, I feel like we are, we're, we're way more hugs and kisses, um, you know, making sure that that family is being taken care of. The house is almost the easy part with what all they have going on in their lives. The house is the easy part. It's like, can you unlock some of those pain points that they're going through and make it easier? And, and like you said, anyone that's been doing real estate for a while has been doing families that are moving into senior living, they might just not have known it or they might not have systematized it. And I think where, and what I'm excited to talk about with mom's house is that when you systematize it now, 
those people, those stakeholders champion you guys as the hero and you get to go in and, I mean, we, we, we'll do anything to buy a house, right? But now they're going to champion you as the person to go to. And if you can be halfway competent and show up when, and, and be there and buy a house, you can close the close ratios through the roof because of the nature of this type of lead. Well, I was thinking back to when, when I'm anxious to jump into what you do, I'm looking forward to learning something here today because I remember, you know, when you when your business gets to a certain level big, and sometimes some ideas fall by the wayside, you never get back to them. And I can remember early on having having ideas to approach nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And we we never really got that off the ground. And it kind of sounds like maybe you're down that road. So I'm, and this is we're going back many years now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Just, you know, like like everything, and as an entrepreneur, you have just so many ideas you can implement. When you get busy, oh, yeah. you're busy only every day, right, Glenn? We have them all. Yeah, I mean that's exactly what happened back in uh, end of 2010. Um, I work for this company called Faster House, right? And they do a few hundred deals a year, and we're a pretty conservative company, meaning that we don't spend, we're not blowing everybody's doors up with our marketing budget. So we were always tasked with for every deal that we did through our marketing channels, could we do one through our networking channels? And so we really championed the networking side. And so back in into 2010, we started really looking at other wholesalers, other realtors. And then the, I came up with the senior living idea, the same thing that you said. And, and, and here's what happens when, when you hear it on the surface, of course, they're good. They're like peanut butter and chocolate. They go together really well. Yeah. Here's the problem. The senior living industry deals with seniors and seniors get taken advantage of more than any other class of people, right? And yeah. so it's all about trust. And I'm going to tell you right now, when people hear this conversation that we're having, they think to themselves, I'm going to walk into the nearest senior living community, put my hand out and say, hey, I'm Bob, I'm a realtor and I'm an investor and I want to buy houses. And Glenn and Amber, that's not the way it is done. No. And, and the reason, and in fact, you don't want to be considered a, a realtor, even if you are one, that's not what you should lead with. And you don't want to be uh, an investor because a lot of times that's looked at as a shark investor. Mm -hmm. And so what I do in the industry is... So, so let's talk about the senior living industry and why it's so important. Um, the, the, the client lives with them on average 28 months. That's built in inherently into the, into the model, right? So they don't stay that long. And so there's this always constant revolving door. And, and what happens is the families, you don't take a healthy mom to senior living, right? Something has happened. And now you, you're, you're scrambling to try to find the best care, which by the way, that's the number one thing. Where is mom going to get the best care? But the problem is, is that you just found out from the doctor that mom has to now move into 24 hour care. You just found out the place that we picked out is $8,800 a month because you never pick the cheap one. You, you never go with the cheapest one. It's your mom, right? You always pick them. And then you go, well, how the heck are we going to afford this? And you talk to your brothers and sisters. In that moment, guys, it almost always comes down to the house. Some Americans have a ton of money in the bank, but most don't. They have a pension and they have equity in their house. And so until that house is unlocked, um, I ask this loaded question. In fact, this is one for your listeners right now. Do you ever have a situation where they want to move mom in, but they can't until they get the house sold? Mm. What that did right there is it unlocked their brain to be, Philip's the guy that fixes that problem. I didn't say I'm a realtor. I didn't say I'm an investor. I said, do you ever have that situation? And here's the thing. I already know the answer. The, the answer is they always get a laugh. They're like, Phil, every day, that's what we deal with here. That's, that's what we're dealing with. And I go, Exactly. And I fix that problem. Right. And you're, what you're trying to do is unlock their brain to the fact that you're going to fix a problem that the senior living industry faces every single day. And when you do it the right way, what's phenomenal about it is it's like a plant, it's like building an oil well. When you build that relationship, you're not going to get leads today. You'll get them tomorrow, the next day, next month, year after year. I've been doing deals with the same people since 2011. Right. I've got one guy that I do 10 deals a year with 10 deals. You know, and my average profit in St. Louis is 15 grand. So that one relationship's worth 150 grand a year to me. And so when you're tasked with how do I make my phone ring with quality leads without having a huge marketing budget, when I, when I look at the world right now, I think, is this the time to be trying all kinds of, it's really easy to spend money, right? When you're in this well, marketing business. That's it, for sure. It, oh, it's, it, it'll fly out the door so easy. So the question is, as soon as you put that money back, now you've got that worry on your pillow at night, will I get the return? And with this, you're building relationships that are sustainable and you'll have them ongoing and forevermore because these people don't really leave the senior living industry, uh, just like we're probably never going to leave the real estate industry, right? So, so the yeah. relationships are so valuable. Um, and, and let's talk about the nature of the best lead. In my, in my mind, 
there's like four or five attributes that make these the best leads I've ever worked in that the families need to sell the house versus want to. When I hear all these people doing cold calling today, I'm like, good luck with that. I mean, my, my best impersonation of a cold call lead is like, yeah, I'll sell my house for the right price. It's like, well, that's not real motivation, right? right. right. These people need to sell. They almost always have a hundred percent equity. In fact, my numbers show about 85% of the time they have 100% equity. They're almost always a house that is what I would consider grandma clean. And what I mean by that is it's got the utilities updated, maybe a decent roof, but it's not 2021 standard, right? It's not retail ready. And not to mention it's full of stuff. Right. And then the, the, the next biggest one is that there's less competition. Who I'm up against normally is a realtor. And it's usually one. And the realtor makes my life so easy because they walk in and they say, clean this place out. And when you're talking about somebody's forever home, that could be easily a 30 to 90 day project. Because yeah. remember all the kids live all over the country, right? The families live all over. And mom's moving from a 1700 square foot house with a, a lower okay. level full of stuff into a 12 by 14 room. Yeah. So she needs to get rid of 99% of her stuff. Where is that stuff going to go? Uh, a, a crazy stat in St. Louis from some of my uh, downsizing companies, the average sale price of all of people's belongings on these sales is $5,000 in St. Louis. The average that's, cost that's to put from that all their, That's all from all their estate stuff, right? All their, that, that's their stuff, right? The salt and pepper shakers, the pots, yeah. their stuff, right? It's five grand is what it makes. It costs five grand to put the sale on. I bet. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're it's, it, I would say that's worse than zero, right? Because it took your time. Right. And yeah. right. So we all think, you know, dad paid $1,800 for that organ and, and you know, it's, it's worth a ton. And, uh, you know, I, it, it's, it's this pain process of going through trying to get that house cleaned out. Right. And the realtor saying you have to clean this place out. And I come in with solutions to say, Hey, I've got people from treasures to trash to turn this into cash for you. Uh, you can take your heirlooms and leave everything else. It is such a blessing. I see, I can see the weight come off of their shoulders, right? When they realize that they don't have to come back to this house, if you can catch a family on like that second weekend of taking boxes out of the basement into the dumpster, you know, you, you, yeah. you got something going. And so um, you, you're a solution for them. people having to go through houses. It's really emotional for people having to go through the houses and all of those keepsakes and everything. Yeah. So you're saving them that you're there. They have a headache and you're giving them the aspirin. You, you better believe and Here's what happens, Amber. They'll fly into town, right? The, the, the adult children will. And you know what it's like when you start opening up boxes? There was a memory bank. Oh, yeah. right? And you, it might take three hours to get through one box of pictures. Could you start talking? And, and then, and here's the crazy part. Families that get along don't get along during this process. I bet. That's unfortunate. The, the division of stuff, like the claws come out, right? And so what I've done is I've specialized in being a solution for this, right? That family just found out mom has to go to 24 hour care. They just found out it's $8,800 a month. They just got told that they have to clean it out and they, to, and they have to rehab it to get that retail number. And then Philip comes along and says, nope, I can close in three weeks. Here's what my offer is going to be based on you know, <laughs> how we buy our houses, right? And when you think about the nature of the best leads, um, they, it, <laughs> my close rate is probably 35% is what it's been since 2011 on these. And not because I'm some superhuman closer. It's just they're so teed up right, and ready to go that I think anybody could have a, a close ratio close to that. Do you find that most of the people that you deal with are the daughters or the sons, or is it 50-50? It, it all depends, right? I mean, I, I would say it's normally the daughter. Um, there's some weird, like, you know, stereotypes, like the daughter took care of the care, and sometimes the son took care of the finances. Like, there's, there's a lot of weird dichotomies out there. Um, but I find it, I'll answer it a different way. It's usually on the child that didn't leave. Uh, most right, most yeah. adult child, children live 400 miles away. That's the average. And so it's, it, it's, the burden usually falls on the one that's still there. Okay. That makes sense. So I, I, I made some great notes. I, I love one thing you said that may not apply to most of our listeners, but certainly applies to us. We're actually in the middle of hiring somebody on now. That's going to be a networking person. Like that's, that's, a, we're going to hire, that's one of our rocks for this year is to nice. hire a person on. And because I realized that we, I was always that guy and I stepped out of that role in my company and I, we've lost that a little bit. Cause I have, you know, we have salespeople that are out there doing their thing and they're running leads, all that kind of stuff. And it's all virtual now with us. Cause we live in New York. And we can't leave. So it, it is what it is. But um, you know, I'm looking at when you said, when you said one for one, 
That was really interesting. One for one. Like you get one, if you have one lead come in from marketing, try and get one lead from networking. That's a pretty high ratio. And, a, and that would totally drive your cost per deal down by 50%. Exactly right. I mean, that's an amazing, that's an amazing piece from a, from a high level business step. I know most of our listeners maybe aren't there, but it's something we should aspire to. But I also, I wrote down the notes when you said family needs to sell over wants to. So right. Motivated seller, mm-hmm. right. Right out of the gates, almost hundred percent equity, which is gold for us as far as a lead goes um, 80% of the time. And then less competition, only a realtor usually. How do you, how do you set yourself apart? Because obviously we're all out there in the same game. And, you know, when we come in, some people are thrilled to have us and some people think that we are a great white coming in the door. And, you know, we're all looking for a deal. How do you how do you make that distinction? I'm assuming it's through relationship you build, but I want to hear what you do. Because Yeah, I would say it's because of the fifth attribute of this is that I'm going to teach your uh, with mom's house. I teach people how to find these nine different stakeholders in the industry. So the senior living community is just one of those. Right. There's there's aid and attendance benefits providers. there's, There's senior attorneys. There's a placement agents, there's downsizing experts, there's all these vendors in the senior living world that are at that flashpoint for the family, right? And so to answer your question, I don't ever get looked at as a great white anymore because like a placement agent says, hey, John, call Phil. He's my most trusted guy. I've been using him for years. You're not their first I'm saying? I'm, that's that fifth attribute that this is a warm referral. So let's say, let's say the three of us were brothers and sisters, right? And we were helping our mom and we were, and we were using a placement agent to help us pick out where to get the best care. How much more important is where is mom going to get her end of life care than the house, right? Now, when that person says, hey, call Billy over here. He's my most yeah. trusted buyer in town. Guys, it's game over. It really is. That If you can be a little competent to show up and you know, have a smile on a business card, you can close these deals because you're teed up from that other person that they already are getting their advice from. You already had, you get third party credibility from them immediately. So you don't yeah. even have to, you get to skip a whole step and then you show up and people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And if you are a, you know, a genuinely good person, I don't think that's something you can fake. I think people can see through that, but if you're right. a genuinely right. good person, yep. Which, which, which really comes down to, um, in my training, I think if you aren't inherently good person, meaning you're not going to go that extra step for these families, I think you should, it'll almost be a non-starter because I think the industry yeah. will kind of like spit you out anyway. Exactly. If, uh, there's a lot of networking that happens in senior living, but if you're only there to wait for your turn to talk and you're not there to collaborate and, and build these relationships, the people will see through it. And you know, so it's worth, it's worth it to build a relationship. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. And the other thing that I really like about this approach is you are genuinely helping people because we do kind of get looked at as the used car salesman of, yeah. of houses yeah. Yeah. and, and we're really, you really are solving somebody's problem here. You really are coming to them in their time of need. Yes. It's a win-win you're in this. It's a, it's a for-profit business, right. but it's, it's, it's just as much a solution for them as it is for you. And I, I love that. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I, I was thinking about, well, I lost my dad a few years ago and, and, you know, during that time, you know, it's a hard time. I mean, I don't know if you've ever lost, you've lost a parent, but it's, it sucks. And so I, I, uh, with my dad, you know, when the funeral director who they'd already picked out in advance, but when he recommended things, you know, whatever was the, you know, the flower or the, you know, whatever it was like, yep. yep you yep, took it. You yep, took yep. it, right? Because why, why not? Why would you argue with the expert? Simplicity. Right. And you want simplicity at that time. You have enough going on with your emotions. You just want life to be some, you know, something in my life, please be simple. Right. Well, how, how do you, what is your exit <clears throat> strategy on those properties? Once you get them, I'm curious what that looks like for you. From a, from a business, I mean, at our level of, you know, 200 houses a year, it's a, over a hundred wholesales, uh, I think mid forties on the rehabs and then 50 in the fifties, we keep as rentals. Do they get angry at you if they, if you wholesale it? I, I mean, really it never comes up until post okay. all of that anyway. Right. Um, they, if it does happen, it hasn't happened to my face. Let's put it that way. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and here's the difference. Wholesaling, the act of wholesaling is fine. As long as you're going to back up your contract and probably in building mom's house, my biggest fear is this writing the contract is one thing, but then if you don't wholesale it, you do have the wherewithal to close on the contract you wrote. Right. And see, that's the biggest difference. We don't let ever, we don't let anyone ever just hang out there. Right. We, we will close on a house that we put it under contract. Got Even it. if we find out bad news later, right? We will close just because we save our our, our name that way. 
Um, I want to keep talking to you, but tell people again how they can reach you, how they can learn more about you know what you do and how you teach people with your website, how they can reach you. Sure. Momshouse.com. I try. I like easy domain names that my eight-year-old could spell, so it's momshouse.com. And, and what we are is we're a nationwide network of senior living uh, communities and referral agents and people in the industry that uh, push these leads. And so my, my, my thing that I need the most is trusted investors nationwide. Right. So I teach people how to go out and be the boots on the ground. You know what? Uh, people have referred to this. They always say that sounds your niche. It sounds a good little niche. They'll say all the time. They say that I hear that all the time. And I always laugh. And I say, do you ever work probate deals? And they're like, yeah, I love probate. And I said, probate are my second favorite deals. And here's why. When someone has passed away with probate, right? That means the family is now in that mode of what's in it for them. Right. Cause they're going to inherit that with pre-probate with what I do nobody's nobody cares if it's 96 grand or 86 grand or 92 grand because that money's going to go sit in an account for mom right nobody's mad at nana that she had to move into senior living right and so when we talk about the size of this market here's one stat that all your listeners need to know 75 percent of americans over the age of 65 will live in some sort of assisted care before they pass away so to me <laughs> three out of four are going to be selling that forever home way before probate. In fact, probates are going to get less and less over time. The, the 50 and 60 year olds now are getting smarter. They're doing trust and things. There won't be as many probates in the future, right? The, yeah. the reason why there's so many probates now is that older generation thought it was morbid to talk about death, but I think we're getting smarter and we're, and the, so probates will be less and less. And what I'm trying to say is the forever home sale is going to happen two or three years before the passing of the person, because 75% of Americans will live in some sort of assisted care. Yeah. I love what you've done, Philip. I think it's great. I think it's uh, it's it's funny as you're talking. I'm I'm thinking back to our original conversations seven eight years ago, talking about that, and we start compiling a list of, and that's as far as I ever went because we're like, ah, you know, because like anything, you got to focus on it, and you've taken that to a whole different level with marketing. So what you're what you guys do, if I understand correctly, is now you're able to help set appointments for people. Is that correct? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So what I want to do is help uh, people. If you if you get into the Mom's House programs, you, we actually set appointments for you to go out and build relationships with those stakeholders. And Glenn, let me tell you something. When I started out, I, I've got this big personality, right? So back in 2011, I was the guy that walked in the front door and said, hey, I'm Philip and I buy houses. And do, and I kept getting new, you know, like kept getting this roadblock. And I, but I'm stubborn, right? And I knew, I knew the niche was too good to stop trying. And I think those first couple of years, I just kept putting my foot in my mouth because I thought I would just lead with exactly what I am. And, and I think that the secret to my success now is the <clears throat> perseverance, obviously, but it's, it's coming from an, a, a what's in it for the other side, right? I always like to think I'm sitting on the same side of the table as the stakeholder now. Not me, it's never me versus them, right? I'm trying to help solve an issue that I know they face every single day. So my scripts of what to say and really <clears throat> my script of what not to say, I would say are just as valuable because if you mess up that relationship out of the gate, you might've cost yourself a million dollars for that relationship, right? Yeah, and so sure. it's worth the time to, to take the training because I think um, the, the, the building those oil wells is too valuable over time to, to do it wrong. Could you figure it out on your own? Sure, but it might take you a couple of years to get over those stumbling points. Oh, yeah. We are huge fans of shortening the learning curve. Yeah, yeah. right. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's always we, we we preach that in our education company all the time. Even even if our companies are like, oh, so and so is charging, we can figure that out. I'm like, we could, but it costs more. You either it always cost either more. pay with time, money, or both. Yeah, you're, you're, you better you're, believe it. You're gonna. You better believe it. Yeah. So what was one of your biggest mistakes when you're building this? When you're building this, what was one of your biggest things that you got hit and you're like, oh wow, I gotta do a course correct on that. Just curious, what was one of your, you know, aha moments for you? Because we all we all have those sure. moments where we're like, yeah, this works, this works, and bam, we're on our yeah. butt going. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, um, just walking in the front door and putting your hand out is not the way this is done. I think when people walk in, it's not the way it's done. You almost want to look at the senior living community, especially now with COVID, is that's almost like a, a hospital setting, right? That's not, you're not walking in and doing the business there. There's better ways to do it. And that's what I show people how to find them when they're not on their, at the work turf, you know what I mean? They're, they're a little more uh, ready to be networked with. Like there, there's a lot of networking that happens in senior living. Um, so you wanna catch them at the right time. And so because I'm a work smarter, not harder guy, I, in building this out, I wanna know, I don't think I'm giving somebody here a 40 hour a week job. If you do this right, you could implement this in three or four hours a week at the beginning until you get up on the horse and then you don't, you know, and as we set the appointments for people, it's like, can you just go out and be likable 
and use the scripts and, and, and the things to where they think of you as a resource that helps them with their business. So you and, should, and, and, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Finish your sentence. Go ahead. People always tell me, they're like, well, how much do you have to pay them to get those leads? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm helping them be more profitable with the clients they already have. They look at me as if they ask me, how much do I have to pay you sometimes to have you make offers on these? I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to pay me a penny, right? That's, that's our dream. But that's, that's the assumption, right? That's how big of a variance there is to where I not only don't pay them, they look at me as, a, as an asset to help lubricate that friction point of, because think about it, if you if you own a senior living community, it's no different than like an apartment building, right? With just a lot more staff. If there was that thing that held up your, your people moving in every single time, and a guy had a solution to eliminate that. And not only did he make them move in quicker, which makes you more profitable, but do you want your clients showing up with bad, their, you know, a bucket full of money that they just sold their house from? Or do you want them showing up with trying to spend money and trying to rehab it and trying to wait for the sale? Like, it, delays, it delays the family's money easily six months. When you it's start solving doing their, their problem too. Yeah. Oh yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So you're not only solving the homeowner's problem, but you're solving the senior living. And you're able to get mom or dad or whatever. It's not just moms, of course, probably, pr primarily moms. Women seem to outlive yeah. the men, right? They do. But, they do. Yeah. But it seems like uh, you're, you're solving, you're, you're able to get them into an assisted living facility faster because it's, it's tough being at home. We have my, we have my mom there to help my dad, but if we didn't have her. We'd have been in a bad way. Yep. You know, my mom's, my mom's a nurse and she's a, she's tough as nails, but I mean, we didn't have her to do this. That would not have been easy, yep. you know? So I think that, you know, you, you providing that, you know, and you, so you're really helping investors provide that for other people. Now that's kind of what your business is morphing into. Sounds like exactly you're right. yourself, but now you're helping other people and you make the introductions to the facilities. Uh, that, that's one of the nine, right? So I, I make introductions to the, there's about nine different stakeholders that, I, that are at that exact clash point. So I always say, when I, when I teach you to go out and network, you're going to meet people that do ramps, that do grab bars, that do incontinence products, that do ambulance work. Those people might be good for you, but the people I'm going to teach you who to network with, I'm, I'm trying to have you not focus, like, you know, me back in 2011, I would take a, a lunch with anybody because I wanted to get to know everyone, right? But most of those people weren't going to be the type of oil well that I wanted to build. So the nine stakeholders are having the exact conversation at the exact right time. And they're in a power position to where, like you said about the funeral director, they're taking advice from this person anyway. And so if these nine people, one of them says, hey, call Phil, it's, it's pretty much game over because that, that, that trust factor is through the roof. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic, Phil. I've, I've learned a ton here with you guys, with you today. This has been, I mean, this is really, you know, it's, it's, you're getting our brain spur. I know I can already tell, I just know my wife, but our, our brains going that way. Our brains have always been that direction. Like I said, that's yeah. always been the, the best house, probably some of the best houses to work on. Cause you're right. Oh. They have a new furnace. They have a new roof. They have good but bones. It's really it's old. The, the kitchen's dated. It's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's funny. It costs, it, even though it looks the same, it, even though it looks better than other houses, it costs about the same to renovate, right? Because you still have to gut the kitchen and everything, but, sure. but it still does that. We, we've always been big fans over the years. One of the things that made us early on was that we always invited the family back for a final view after renovations. And that was a, that was a big thing for us 10 years ago that people, it's so funny. I think 80% or 90% of people love the idea. 20% actually showed up and saw the house because sure, for some reason sure. they got the money. And it was closure, but some people, yeah. some people it became closure for them. And one of those people, it became closure and they became one of our private investors and have been for 13 years now. And Think about that. Think about that. You life. bought a house and made money and then they became your private investor because they liked what your service that you did. Yes. Yeah. I've noticed too, the grandma clean houses, there's less gotchas in them. Like when you go to rehab them, like if you yeah. buy a really haggard house, there's usually that unfor unforeseen. But grandma's house doesn't have that as much because they really did take care of it. They just weren't up with the trends. Yeah. The trends. yeah and I'm thinking to myself, if I'm, if I'm 80 years old and I'm in a house and, you know, why spend 25 grand? I am happy. I'm yeah. in a house. What do I have to update it for? I can think of one person that might have a different opinion of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be 90 going, I got to renovate it again. I just renovated yeah. it. Like, oh, well, doing? sure. And it's funny you say that because I see a lot of houses bought in the 50s and 60s. They got the paneling in the 70s in the basement. And then they got the new kitchen in the 90s. Well, now here we are at 2021. Well, that 90s kitchen's got to go. Right. Yeah. Not, so, not really so, uh, if you wait long enough, everything's, you know. It, yeah. I try to embrace change in this world, right? Because we can't change. We can't yeah. stop it. So. Right. And I, I think also when we started, it was mostly Glenn and I that were actually going out and talking to the people. But as our business grew and we took on salespeople, we lost some of that personal connection. And so we bit. didn't we didn't end up buying a lot of those deals because we lost that. Yeah. That. 
connection. Yeah. So I think and, it's great. Yeah, and, and let's rekindle yeah. those, right? Because I look when you look at like other wholesalers and other uh, realtors and in the senior living industry, that's the three pillars that we get most of our deals from. Yeah. Here's what I like about the senior living industry is that realtors and wholesalers are in our business. And sometimes yeah. they treat us like a flavor of the week, right? Because they have other, they understand the business much better than most. The senior living industry, they're not, they don't even want to be in the real estate business. Right. Right. right? So when you build that relationship, you're their go-to from, that, from now on. Like if, if, if 10 years from now, you're doing deals with people that I teach you how to build relationships with, think, extrapolate what the value is over time. Right. And, and here's the other thing, Amber, too, that um, I really think females have the advantage in what I do. And that's a rare statement in, in, in real estate, right? Because they're, they're just, there's empathy there. I'll give you the best example I can. Compassion. And, and, they're built with compassion and we're not. And I'll, uh, yeah, and I'll give you the best example. We, this is pre-COVID. We had a training course where we had uh, investors from all over the nation come in and we went on a field trip to a senior living community. And the females were all like, hey, like touching people's arms, like, how you doing? And like, you know, getting to know people. The guys are standing over here in the corner like, can we get the hell out of here? You know what I mean? It's like, and it was just, it was clear. Like, and Ben and I, my partner, we, 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 we observed that and go, man, females just are different when it comes to this. And they have the advantage because I can't teach, you know, think about, my, I've had success with my big personality. So when I say stereotypes that females have the advantage, what I, what I mean by that is I think, um, over, you know what I mean? If, I know what you mean. It's, so you know what I'm so I'll say this as a female, it's because it's a delicate subject, especially for a guy to talk about, because, you know, people get so offended and everything. But by and large, women tend to be more nurturing and more compassionate and more empathetic. That's, yeah. you know, not to say, you know, there's always an exception to the rule and there's sure. guys that are just as much so. And there's women that aren't that that empathetic. We know but that just, if, 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 men had, if men had to birth and raise children, we, we'd be extinct because we never have it. We don't have it. <laughs> right. And I had success being, you know, made out of pig iron myself. So I would say anybody can do this if you just want to apply the steps. But I think females have, have an advantage in what I do. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. So tell everybody one more time how they can reach you, how they can learn more about what you do. Sure. Momshouse.com. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Momshouse.com. Philip, it's been a great, great having you here today. Great uh, insight. And uh, if you guys want to uh, get in that market, by all means, make sure that you get a hold of them at momshouse.com. Go talk to Phil and uh, tell him we sent you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank we'll you see guys. you next Thanks time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.